Right, so for Fix It Friday for the 1st of July today, we've got two issues to take a look at. One is the toolkit bug, and the other is just making some normal maps from images. So the first one, toolkit bug. So if you are using the attachment tool and you are setting up your accessory item, your attachment, so you've got it in place. So we're using, as we can see here, we're using right hand, RT hand. So the bug is that when you select your mesh and you want to set it up, so set up mesh, we have to click this button, the following error message occurs. This. Python traceback, blah, de, blah, de, blah, key attachment export not found. So it turns out the fix for this relates to, so let's take a look at that again. So the key to the error is this attachment export. That attachment export is referring to one of the collections that are in the outliner. And it should have, or it should be, attachment underscore export. So basically the script can't find this collection. So if we take a look at the outliner, scroll down the list to see where that is. It's right down at the bottom here. But it's being caused by there's, well, there's, there's no underscore, it's a period, attachment period export. So all we need to do to fix this temporarily until the script is updated, well, the script has been updated, but if you get this error, this is what's causing it. So if you bring in a legacy product, so if this is a product that's been made with one of the earlier versions of the toolkit, you might encounter this issue. And if you do, all you need to do Double click and replace the period with an underscore. It's as simple as that. Return. What we should find is that we can now select our mesh and click the setup mesh button and it works. So we now have a cylinder where it's supposed to be under the attachment underscore export folder and we've also got let's just hide that for a second we've also got this additional armature which is what we need the attachment uh, attachment dot rig so that is how you fix that particular error message so just rename if it does occur just rename attachment dot export as it would be with the error to attachment underscore export so that's that that's, that's fixing that right so for the next one normal maps so what we're going to do is let's load in the I think it's that one don't say the belt. Yes, so all we're going to do, so this is a belt, a simple belt that we made in a previous Fix It Friday. And what we're going to do is just use this and create some normal maps for this object. We won't export it to Studio because we'll need to set this up as a, an actual item. But what we can do is preview the normal maps in Blender by setting up a material that uses a normal map. So once we've got our object made and UV mapped, let's just push this back into place where it should be. teeny tiny gap so we don't get any Z fighting. In fact, let's use view sidebar. Z 
seven, six. Do the same on this side. Seven, six. Move the belt buckle into place. And then what we can do, select all. So that's the UV map. So what we were doing is essentially discussing optimization of our UVs. So this front section is our feature element. So it takes up most of the UV map. And then the belt, which uses a tiling technique. So we've got a unique section and we've got a tiled text section section we've got a tiled section and then we've got these two side panels to make the object a little bit unique so we could apply some branding to that or some text or something else so what we need to do so this is our UV map this is the layout that we've decided on so what we're going to do with this is export it. So UV, export UV layout. UV, export UV layout. This will create a UV of our object. Well, the UV, it's, it'll create an image map. All UVs. It's generally always going to be PNG and we want this to be one so that we get the wireframe and the faces included in the map. We'll call this Fix It Friday Belt UV and then export. So that's exported it. So we need to switch to our image editing package or we could do some basic editing here so that we we can use texture paint. So we've got some basic tools that we can paint some areas so that we delineate the sections that we want so we can see the areas so that's white And this is what we mean about using the way that we set the object up, utilizing different areas of the UV. To create some uniqueness. So let's make this one green, which is on this side. So green on this side, whoops, went a bit too far. Let's do blue on the other side. So we can create some unique areas to disguise the tiling or repetitive nature of this section. And of course the front. Let's make that red.
So we've got red, blue, green, and the repeat or the tile as white. So what we can do with this, this just delineates the areas of the UV map so that it makes it easier to see exactly what we're doing. And what we could also do actually is just mark the sections so we know which is the top just to double check so that just lets us know which way up our UVs are and so what we can do with this now that we've done that we've changed the image so the image menu has a little asterisk next to it or appended to it which means there's some data that needs to be saved so file save as belt png so fix it friday belt diff we can change the format so let's use a lossless target raw or bitmap or tiff you can use png but if you use png make sure to do to turn off the compression so it's a lossless or uncompressed tga save oh where did that save yeah accessories okay so now we can take both of those into our image editor First, we've got to find them. Social. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah. Too many files. Oh, there it is. So there's the diffuse. So where's the UV map? Oh, that's a PNG. So it's a different area. There's the UV map. So that's our diffuse. That's our UV map. So what we're going to do with this, we're going to use the UV map more than anything because this, this will be our color map, our, our very basic simple color map so that we can see the effect of the normal map. So we're going to use the UV map. So for our normal map, for it to work or to get the best from it, we need to think of grayscale tones in such a way that white is height and darkness is depth. So black is going to be the lowest areas. It'll be converted into um, depth. White will be converted into height. So if we draw out a mid-tone grayscale area so remember that this top section tiles so we need to make sure that we go right up to the edge on both sides of the image so this is our 256 so let's make this grayscale So one, two, seven, And then what this means essentially is the following. So let's say we wanted to cut a channel into our belt. And within that, we wanted some stitching. What we would do is 
well, you can either paint this or construct your texture. This is just a way of doing this. Uh, so you can either paint it or construct it, but the, set, the principle applies. Same principle applies. So we want this to be darker. Like so. Move that into position. Duplicate. Whoops. Damn it. So duplicate. So that's a channel that's going to be cut into the grayscale. So the grayscale is our mid-tone. The darker section, the ribbon or the strip, is going to indent itself into the grayscale tone. But let's say we wanted to put some stitching in that. Let's do, let's zoom in a little bit. We want to make this lighter. So again, you can paint this. That needs to be above. How round is that? 25%. I don't think it's going to go that much rounder with this um, at this size. So we're going to make this into a stitching. Like I say, you can paint this rather than constructing it. But this is for illustrative purposes. So our alignment's gone a bit wonky, but that's okay. So we'll duplicate all of those, put them into a group. Where did those come from? Whoops. That's weird. Why didn't we put those in there? Duplicate. So that's our stitching. So if we save this file, save as. Call this template. And then what we need to do, so we'll do a test on this so that you can see the process or the principle. Export. So we're 256 by 256, so it's quite small. But because this is a normal map, what we want to use is either PNG or TGA or TIFF, which are lossless formats. Well, TIFF and TGA, those will be in compressed formats. But what this means is that when we bring it into the tool to convert it into a normal map, it won't, there won't be any image artifacts from compression that there to cause issues. So I'm just going to save it as a TGA. So export, 
and put this in the right place. So template, CGA, save. And then for this, what we're going to use is a program called nJob. But you could also use, actually, let's use GIMP. There we go. Uh, no, we're not going to do that right now, so close that. So we have our image, and all we're going to do is drop that into where is that image? Too many assets. All right, so there it is. I'm going to drop that into GIMP. Just scale it up so that we can see it. So, as we were saying, this is our mid-tone. This is our mid-tone. The darker areas are going to be depth and the lighter areas are going to be height. So what we should end up with is a normal map with two channels cut in at the top and the bottom. And then these lozenges acting as stitches in the normal map. As we're using GIMP, so that the process of conversion will differ depending on what it is that you're using to convert. So we're going to get quite a, an interesting normal map because we've still got all of this in place. So we just want to pay attention to what's going on at the top here. So filters. Is it map or generic? Yeah, generic and then normal map. So that's just using GIMP. Again, it'll differ. I'll show it in um, NJOB just so that we have a comparison. So generic, normal map, and it'll convert it. We just need the basics. All of that's okay. Don't need to do too much. We might even be able to reduce the scale a little bit. So it might look as though it's upside down. So we might need to Flip the Y channel for IMVU. So keep an eye on that when you're making your normal maps, depending on what program you're using. So let's do that. OK. So if we save this, so export. Export as. Blah, 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 blah. Hang on a second. So we'll just save that with the append normal so that we know what it is. Uh, that's OK. Export. No compression 
or well origin balancer okay export what we can do is bring that into blender so we want to go into shading we want to add the normal map that we just created to our material so add texture image texture whoops open find our normal map there it is select open and we can collect it collect connect it to normal but it won't work quite as well as we're expecting it to so what we need to do is drop in add vector normal map just drop that in between the two and it'll convert it into a normal map that we should be able to see the effects of and we're not for some reason that's very weird oh yes we are we can see it just running along the top there not quite sure why it's not showing on the belt though that's very odd That is giving us a preview. So there's the normal effect on that section of the image, but I'm not quite sure why it's... not showing up. Oh, that's why. We have to change it to non-color. still not showing up on the other s sections of the image which is weird let's try the wide frame Okay, this is behaving a little weird. Because you can see it in the material preview, it's doing exactly what it should be doing in the material preview. Oh, that's why. Duh. We assigned two materials to this, so we have to do that again. Link, we can select the normal map, so there we go. But we need to correct for vector normal map. There we go. I had forgotten, even though it's right there, this is the this is the um, finding the gorilla. So if you if you've watched the previous Fix It Friday, we were talking about the gorilla. This is the gorilla. Forgotten that we'd assigned multiple materials to this, and 
we couldn't see well couldn't see that F completely forgot about that that's why that wasn't working but there we can see so let's change the UV uh, the diffuse for that to use the wireframe so there we can see that is the effect of the normal map so we can now see that we've got stitching on our belt so let's make an adjustment to that back into our image editor so we want to drop that into a group and so it's that one and that one so take a bit give ourselves a little bit of space so this is a good thing about normal maps is that well normal maps made from images if you're doing this in 3d because you can obviously create this normal map from a high resolution mesh but the good thing about using images for simple things like this is that they're quick relatively quick to adjust and modify so let's save as let's just call this number two export TGA again so lossless export number two so what we'll do this time is use end job so we used GIMP before what we'll do is just use um, end job so we need to drop our template where's it gone number two drop that into there fortunately we can't zoom in on this program it, it's just it it's actual size so for this all we need to do is filter height map to normal map and it will convert it for us oh so those were the right way up see on this one we've got the darker colors at the bottom and lighter colors at the top whereas on the one for GIMP we flipped the channel so the lighter colors were on the top and the bottom for the darker colors which in Blender is what we need because that works okay and that is approximating what we'll see in IMVU in studio if we were to export this we we should see this so that's another thing that you have to watch out for so let's just do this one okay file save as TGA where's the other one there it is number two save and then load that in so what we're going to do is replace that normal map so shading select our object belt buckle make sure we've selected that material we have now noticed the gorilla in the room open number two and we should see a diff slight difference we'll probably see that this these stitch marks or stitching will invert they'll flip upside down and they do so 
So we can change that within Blender, but what would, if we were using, you have to be careful when you are making your normal maps, depending on what program you're using, because it'll flip. This is the green channel, by the way. You need to invert the green channel with some applications, but you don't necessarily need to do that with others. So for example, with GIMP, we didn't do that. So let's open the updated one. Why is that not opening? Okay. Let's find the image. Template two. So we're going to do the same image, but use GIMP again. So zoom in. Same again, filters, generic, normal map. Whoops. Flip Y, so it inverts the colors. Let's leave this at 10 this time. Uh, everything else is OK. OK. Let's save as. No, we need to export from GIMP. Export as number 2. That's OK. Export. Whoops. To be or not to be. Export. So if we now load this into Blender, open. to be it'll obviously now or it should flip these upside down to be and there we go so what we've done is just adjusted template to give us a bit more room top and bottom but you can see how easy that is relative to having to make this as a 3d object but if you wanted even more depth with your stitching, you could paint some whiter highlights along the top of the stitches, and that would give you even more height on the normal map. Whoops. On the normal map. And it, it looks quite effective, even at this low resolution. So we are only using... We're only using that. Essentially, that's how big the image is. A 256 by 256. But because of the way that we've organized the image, uh, not the image, or, well, yes, organized the UV maps on the image, we can create or we can maintain a, a reasonable level of detail. And of course, it also then means now that we've got these areas free to be able to do something more unique with the normal map. So let's... Um, Let's see, what can we do? Let's do... So we've got the belt. Let's just do something with the buckle.
and again just something simple So one of the things, one of the other things that you'll need to keep in mind with your normal maps is that yes, you're gonna be, you can use, you know, tiny detail or not, uh, what's not detail, filigree. You can filigree your normal maps like this, or you can use. Um, paint strokes, pencil strokes, you know, um, pixels that are, well, this is essentially one pixel wide at this resolution, but that won't necessarily translate too well into a normal map. It'll pixelate as it's doing on here. And that may lead to lack of definition. So that's one thing that that's one of the other things you want to watch out for. So try and use So if you're using fonts, for example, where's Playbill? Oh, that'll do. If you're using text or fonts, you want to try and use fonts that are reasonably solid. So we need to put in our background or our mid-tone. Oops, we've got that one selected, so get rid of that. So that's our mid-tone. We want this text to sit on top of, so let's try one seven five. Let's do, uh, do we have any filigree? I don't think we have any patterns. Well, let's just use some, let's just use some stars. Whoops. the other one hearts this is just a disting distinguished left from right so background So we need to just change the color of these. So it's just two two hundred.
save as number three. So that's going to be our overall texture or normal map that we're going to now export, 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 bring that into GIMP. Open. Number three. So again, filters, generic, normal map. Flip Y. OK and then bring this into or reload so we've already got the normal map assigned so what we can do image reload oh no that's we've used a um, we saved it as a different image so I have to load it in specifically Did we save it? Where's it gone? No, we didn't export it, did we? Export as. No, we did. Oh no, that's the yeah. template. So cancel underscore normal. Export. That's okay. Export. Now we can import it. Refresh. There it is. So select. Open. And we can see it. We can see the hearts. So we need to do the same thing for the other material. So we want number three. And we can't quite see it because of the orientation of the light source. So, layout. And there is the normal map. So we can see quite a simple and effective way. So we've got our stars on this side. And we've got the hearts on this side. And they will show up relative to the light source. So although normal maps from images may not be necessarily as detailed as normal maps from 3D meshes, we still have a pretty good degree of flexibility with how we utilize normal maps. Oh, hey, Cleon. It's okay. Finally back, you know? Sorry? I'm saying I'm finally back. Yeah. Right at the end, though. Because we're just basically finished up going over normal maps. But it's the session's being recorded, so it'll be archived. But that is a normal map made using images. And of course, when we export this, we're exporting the mesh as our product and then assembling that in studio so that we use the normal map channel let's just open we aren't going to be able to export this but we can actually just look at so let's just edit the gold bricks So 
So what we would be doing, whoops, is dropping the normal map that we've just created into the normal map channel. And we can use the diffuse if we, whatever color that's going to be or whatever it is in the diffuse channel. And that would give us our belt with these details on. So that is making a normal map from an image. So you it export us... the mesh and then you like bring it to GIMP? No, no, no. It's 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 um it's a we're making the normal map just using an image. So we're just creating a grayscale image like this, exporting that out and then converting it in an image editor like GIMP or something that can convert images, grayscale images into normal maps. That's all we're doing. And oh, that creates okay. our normal maps. So you don't need to, you don't necessarily need to make high resolution meshes and do the whole texture baking, which is what you're referring to. Um, you can just do it with images, and for most things, it's that's fine. So all we're doing is just showing how flexible it is to use images to create simple things like this. So we've got our um, stitching. It's pretty detailed. Yeah, well, it is for this. We've got some features, and those all come through on our image. And they, they come through quite well. And of course, you can use your opacity map to cut out sections if you wanted to. But yes, that is a normal map from an image. Right, I'll stop recording and then um, if you have any questions, we can.